hey, party people! Thank you all very much for joining me on another episode of Fifi Plays a Mini Medley. And I just wanted to take some time and do some cutesy little games, uh, because life has been a little bit crazy for me lately. <sighs> so I just wanted to be looking at some colorful, casual, easy-going games. So here we go. A Book of Beasts and Buddies will be our first game of the day. Dedicated to Bud, Lily, and Blossom. Dad taught me the ways of the wilderness. Mom made sure I always had snacks, and Blossom found friends wherever she went. When they could no longer travel to visit their favorite places and friends, I devised a way to bring creatures and places to them. Oh. Um, interact, I guess. A scoot scoots near. <laughs> Look at his little face. Uh, hey! You raised your hand for a high five, but the scoot has. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> Silly me! The scoot has no hands or arms or fingers! Um, here, want some food? You show, some scoot... you show the scoot some snacks from your pack. It simply smiles back and continues to scoot about. I'll try poking him. You poke the scoot. It is very sticky. You have some super sticky scoot, scoot on your fingers. Uh, okay, I guess I'll run. Realize that you stepped in the scoot sc scoot spoot, which hampers your movement. However, the scoot isn't chasing you, so your slow retreat is successful. <laughs> what the heck? Environment, any diet? Don't know. Thacko. I don't know what that means either. Uh. Ooh. Oh my. TikTok aisle. I might check that one out later. Uh. Okay. Well. Let's just get going and see all of the creatures. Oh. Aww, a wild gubbin appeared. High five! The gubbin gives you a high five! Woohoo! Uh, I'll share something. Gubbin doesn't seem interested in any snacks, but it gives you a hug. Aww, what a sweetie! Hide. There isn't anything dangerous to hide from, but there isn't any gubbins to hide from either. The gubbins is gone. Aww. Inspect? You observe your surroundings. There is no sign of any gubbins in the vicinity. I'll give... You leave out some snacks and wait for the gubbins to come back. You hear the gubbins calling from afar. Alright, well, I guess I'll just leave. You leave to look for gubbins. Stealth plus 112. Other names, Twiggins, Buggins, and Vexins. Fascinating. Next! Aww. It looks like Steven when he transformed into that, that, the, whatever it is called thingy. Uh, a stony worm pokes its head out of the hole in the dirt. Hey, Pete. You didn't think to bring any inorganic snacks that such a creature might find appetizing, but the worm appears to have an unearthed a sapphire that it happily ingests. Magic. You contemplate casting stone to flesh on the earthen worm. You imagine it would become a flesh worm craving your flesh. <laughs> the worm's stony skin feels like living earth. The worm excretes a dusty toot. Fascinating. Alright, I'm out. You bravely run away. <laughs> Stone slug and chert worm. Rocks, dirt, and gems. Alright, next. Time seems to cease as you become lost in geometry so banal that you begin to forget your own existence. High five! Your hand remains raised for reasons you cannot recall, for even the potential of excitement has departed from your mind. Oh, is it worth poking? Is anything worth poking? You are overcome with existential in, uh, in new eye? I don't know what that word is. And fall unconscious. Oh, shit. Oh, my. Space sanity loss. Prime, more deal, and new eye. The big four. Alright, that was fun. Next. Ooh, this one looks wise. A bearded cactus balances before you. I'm saying, your singing seems out of place. Well, that sucks. Uh, high five. You consider oh, right, it's a cactus. <laughs> you consider high fiving the cactus, but would rather not make a pin cushion of your palm. Yeah, that's fair. As you consider poking the cactus, you realize that poking is part of its very being. In 
this moment, you share a deeper understanding of the cactus. Stand still. You embrace the cactus's silent stoicism. Your understanding of the cactus grows. You feel a sense of misunderstanding and regret as you retreat. I don't know, am I doing this wrong? Do I need to interact with them until something else happens? I really don't know. Uh, water, sunlight, uh, saga, she is succulent. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's a different game. Okay, five more to go, and then we'll go on to the next game. <gasps> wow! A garden dragon! It floats before you. Uh, eat. You glance down at your small snack pack and then watch as the dragon inhales a hill and washes it down with a river. Uh, poke. You poke at the dragon's living body of earth and plant and ponder its existence. You climb onto the dragon's back to explore further. Oh, picnic. You relax and have a snack upon the dragon's tranquil back. You don't have any tools sufficient for gardening. <laughs> Well, that sucks. Uh, you explore the garden and wonder what secrets it might yield if you could only understand the dragon. Alright, well, I'm out. You run barefoot across the dragon's lush back. The grass feels pleasant beneath your feet as you flee. Ooh, garden variety dragon or dra garden? Garden dragons are a living guest dealt of earth and plants. These colossal but gentle beasts are most often found flying through rainstorms to water their burdened backyards. Oh. oh, hey, look! I unlocked all the information about that one! Cool. Yay! Suddenly, Sasquatch! Aw, he's cute! I'll sketch him. <laughs> you start, start to sketch the Sasquatch. She strikes a pose. How will you portray her eyes? Captivating. How will you portray her nose? Uh... What? How will you portray her mouth? Sweet smile! How will you portray her hands? Well, I can't see them, but, uh... I guess I'll just say bear? Portray her fur! Silky! Portray her feet! Uh... Well, I mean that they're not particularly big. Uh... In... In... What's the word? rest of her body. So I guess I'll say Oh, I messed up! I feel your finished piece, but it looks like you've done messed up. Aww. High five. Aww. You... Oh, I see. I'll give you something. Her arms remain crossed. Oh man, I made her mad! I guess I'll try again. Sasquatch looks at you like who taught you how to draw. Contemplate going to art school and friend about your crippling debt. Okay, I want to try that one again. Suddenly Sasquatch. Okay, I'll get you again. Uh, captivating. Uh, I don't know what this word means, but I'll try it. Uh, sweet smile. Uh, manicured. Ah, oh, I see. Because I high-fived her, and she said she manicured it, so good. Uh, silky. Uh, big foot. <laughs> beef jerky, but she hasn't beef with your sketch. Oh, man. Okay. I'll try again. Maybe I need to, uh, do other things first. Call. You kept your best Sasquatch call, but it comes up with a cat call. Ah, the Sasquatch glares and stomps off in a huff. Oh, man! I'm sorry! I didn't mean to be disrespectful. Uh, I'll hide. You hide, but the Sasquatch seems to have noticed you're peeping. She screams and runs off. I'm not peeping! Uh, uh, lonely, perhaps? Sweet smile, manicure, silky. <laughs> yeah, I did it! You reveal your masterpiece of the Sasquatch Coos. Yes! Magic, detangling her tresses and providing a much needed salon treatment. Though you're missing a certain je ne sais quoi. Quatch. <laughs> je ne sais quoi. That's hilarious. I'll give you something now. You give your 
artwork to Yasquatch. She hugs you, she's powerful, strong. You offer Yasquatch a cup of coffee. She shares the cake. She keeps she wondering where she had been keeping that cake. <laughs> Alright, we did it! She blows you a kiss and gives you some muffins. Aww! Alright! Royal muffins! Despite their, so there is actually a way of doing this game. I might have messed up a little bit, but I might go back and uh, retry everyone else to... Because it would be nice if I could fill out the whole book. Anyways, um, despite their fabulous naturalist lifestyle, Sasquatch are often misunderstood and maligned. Please don't be prejudiced against, their, against Sasquatch. Clothing is uncomfortable and their fabulousness just comes naturally. <gasps> and they got a little star for a, a stamp of approval. That's cute! All right, I'll just finish these ones up and then I'll figure it out. What? It looks like a Pokemon. A large lizard races around you. Uh, right? Oh, okay, well that was wrong. Uh, run. You run to people from the lizard, but it's too fast. Okay, well that was wrong. Uh, wait. You wave goodbye as the lizard races on. All right, move. Got it. Attempted to stay. What? Whoa, what? That's all the options. All right, I guess I'll have to come back to that. But wait, I have muffins. Oh wait, she didn't. Want to. All right. Anyway, a noxious cloud lingers in the air. Ben, before the cloud draws too closely, you inhale deeply and hold your breath. Attack! You land a mighty blow. You realize something solid was at the center of the cloud before you collapse. Well, that didn't work. Wait. You attempt to wave the cloud away with your hand, but it isn't effective. You now have a stinky hand. You inhale, and now wave. Stinky hand, defend again. You cannot hold your breath any longer. As you, <gasps> as you expel the air from your lungs, you blow away the cloud to reveal a strange mushroom creature who appears to be casting a spell. Uh, wait. During the mushroom, you wave your hands, mirroring the mushroom movements, and you accidentally counter its cloud kill. Attack! Swap the mushroom on the head. It lets a little whoosh. It's debilitating. It's all unconscious. Man. <laughs> this one's really cute! Defend, defend. Okay. Defend again. Diving behind a log, you nearly avoid the mushroom's ray of decay. The log crumbles. Defend. Unable to find sufficient comfort, you find yourself caught by a mushroom cloud kill. Alright, that doesn't work. One more time! Defend! Defend! Uh... Attack! Alright. Oh, Maybe I'll defend three times. And then... Wait! Here, feet! You extend an offering, but the mushroom keeps its distance. It doesn't like the smell of you or your snack. Wait. What's the power to you wave your hands? You deduce it is out of magic. Please, send an offering to defend. No means to protect yourself against the poor, powerful onslaught of spells to throw on the ground. You must have lost from the head. It hurts you. Well, I guess that's it. Oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna win against that one. Alright, there's one more. Whoa! A nightmarish apparition looms over you. Defend. A flaming dragon of darkness emerges from the wraith's hand. Despite your desire to stay here,
Alright, well, I can't figure that one out. Let's try this one again. We should go get gubbins. Expect. Leave. Alright. Um, what did I do wrong with this worm? Magic. Perhaps because it has no arms, or possibly because its twin genstone's eyes are actually inert eye spots, the worm does not wave back. You are unable to toot on command. You bravely run away. Alright, well I can't- Oh, I did it! Gemworms are reclusive, silicone-based creatures that inhabit the deepest recesses of the earth, where they forage for rare minerals to consume. They are blind and perceive through taste, scent, and sound. Gemworms excrete a dusty powder and communicate via flatulence in a combination of scent and sound. Okay, so they're blind. I will know that now. Well, I'm not doing very well for this. I know there's more to this one. It has no mouth or any discernible features worth noting. You shudder and fall unconscious. Well, I got it. The Eldritch Boar is incomprehensible madness, and to perceive it is but the interpretation of a forgotten thought. Describing primordial NUI is engaging in infinite hyperbole. Fascinating. Uh, high five! High five! The forgotten phrase is a lingering shadow of consciousness. High five! Dots. High five! Dots, dots. High five! A stick collides with your palm, as if it were a branch from Yidrasil. Uh, your mind blooms with thought. It appears to be a mundane stick, but you can't help but wonder why it is in space. High five! Your hand remains raised for a reason you cannot recall, for even the potential of excitement has departed from your mind. Well, I got a stick! I wonder what I could do with that! Hey, I finished it! Yes! All right, let's interact with this cactus again. All right, let's, uh... A deeper understanding. Uh... Sing. Stand still. Stand still. Hope. Stand still. To embrace the cactus's silent stoicism, your understanding. High five. As you practice the unspoken art of the cactus, you realize a high five is not with your hand, but with your heart. Bond persists beyond distance, and he gave you his basis to commemorate your training. <gasps> Yay! Did another one! I don't know what that is. Bearded cacti are highly intelligent plants who can often be found meditating in the desert. Despite their tendency for solitude, or perhaps because of it, bearded cacti are often experts in the art of Ishin Den Shindo. Alright, let's see what we got for this dragon. I will explore it. And explore it. You sense that the dragon is directing you to its exceptionally overgrown grown mane of tall grass. Explore. You explore the ground beneath the tall grass and discover a sword! You recognize the sword from a catalogue of swords and sundries. It is Kusanga Kusanagai Kusanagi no Chu Tsurugi, the grass cutting sword. Uh Ryuazamono. Neat. Run barefoot, the grass feels pleasant. Do I get the sword? Yeah! Uh, da 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 da. I got a sword now. Sweet. And I got muffins. So, what can I do with this thing? Oh, man. Alright, well, I don't know what to do with that. Let's go back to this little guy. I don't know what the heck is going on here. <laughs> I think I'm done with this game. Um, I can't figure out. Let me try this one one more time. Okay, don't touch it. Noted. Well, I can't figure out anything else. Let me try with this one one more time. <laughs> oh, 
I'll just GTFO that. You try to flee from the race 100 track tackle fright, but you are already dreadfully scared. Alright, um, that was fun. I got all of the creatures, most of them completed. Hold on, let me try. I'm really into this game now. You leave out some snacks. You hear the gobbins calling. There's no sign. Hide again. Give again. Inspect again. Alright, fine. Alright, I'm out. I'm on to the next game. I hope you enjoyed this one. And now it's time for game number two. Okay, this next game is just called uh, Walking Simulator. So that's what we're going to do. Um... Since this is just going to be a mini part and I'm not going to play the full game, I'm going to start with Alaska because I've always wanted to go there. You use some of your time for good and what do you get in return? Nothing. Well, <laughs> all right, here I am. Woo! This is very uh, sensitive mouse controls. All right, everyone, where should we go first? It looks like there's quest markers. I hope we see some animals. That would be fun. Uh, okay, it says orbital drop shipping. Recover the packages from the other drop points. Can I run? Woo! Oh, yeah! Look at me go! <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna fix this mouth sensitivity because this is too much. Uh, that's a little bit better. All right, let's go. This reminds me of Skyrim. Hundred more meters. Running, running, running. I'm running and jumping. What's that? Oh, I thought I saw an animal. But it was just a rock. Hiya! Yeah! <laughs> nice. <laughs> this is actually kind of fun. This is another free game uh, from Steam. I'm here. This distress signal. Oh, what? Oh, I guess they got attacked. Oh my. Can I not take any of this? Oh, pick up, and I'll pick that up, and I will pick this up. Nice! I can carry a lot. All right, let's go. Anything else? Nope, that's it, okay. Anyway, uh, does that say 400 meters or 36? Okay, this is going to take a while, so I'll just meet y'all when I get there. More supplies. Can I take any more? <laughs> Woo! How high can I go? How high can I go? <laughs> this is... I can't tell if I'm running slower. Ooh, careful. I haven't seen any animals yet, which is a shame because we're in Alaska, so I at least expected to see some bears or some caribou or something. But anyway, here we are. This is the distress signal and a flashing box of some kind. Is that a dead dog? Oh, it's a robot dog. The AI core is missing. Okay. Well, what's this? Oh, cool. I guess collecting supplies gives me likes? Not sure what that entails, but um, I feel like I'm faster without all those boxes, so that's good. I will bring this robot pu puppy back to life, and it will be my friend, my forever companion. But I have a long way to go, so I'll just meet you all when I'm back there again. Oh, a road! I thought I was in the middle of the wilderness! Is that another... Oh, no, that's just a rock. Oh, wow! <gasps> a river! I want to jump it! Yay! Wow, that's cool! <laughs> All right, anyways. Hope I don't get hit by cars. Nothing coming that way, nothing coming that way. Okay, I think I'm safe. <laughs> How 
does the AI core get all the way over here, though? That's what I'd like to know. Aw, oh, look! It's like a Microsoft Word expansion! <laughs> okay, now I gotta go all the way back. I can see why they call this walking simulator. Because it's just making me walk 500 meters this way and then 500 meters the other way. But I will see you all if anything interesting happens or if... Or when I get there. Alright. Okay. We're almost back and I have collected quite a few supplies on the way back. So I'm gonna put those away. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save the dog first. And then I'll put them away. The robot dog has a GPS! Oh boy! Let's get some more likes. <laughs> Yay! Look at it! Oh! <laughs> I love having a little friend. Uh, activate the satellite to find the dog's owner. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh, we have a long way to go. Can I ride you? Okay, that's, that's a no. <laughs> you can talk to it and get an achievement. That's so cute. Anyways, all right. Uh, I guess I'm going to the mountains now. My little buddy is coming with me, so uh, we will both meet you there when we arrive. Woo! This is fun. I'm sure we'll find some kind of wildlife up in here, up here in the mountains. Up -up. Oh, <laughs> I thought I lost him for a minute, but he's right there. Good dog. Wow, this is really a beautiful game, though. Flowers, and the, like, I can practically smell the fresh mountain air. Up, up, up we go to the mountains. Still got, <laughs> we're not even halfway there, unfortunately. Oh my goodness. Well, uh, let's hope I don't have fall damage. I do. Huh. Well, that's a good part for me. That means I don't have to worry about jumping around these mountains. Let's go here and let's see. <laughs> here we go. Oh, I missed it. And go. <laughs> roll, baby, roll. All right, I guess I'll get back up. Oh no, my dog. Little doggy. Oh, man. Oh, it's right there. Good boy. All right, let's go. Wow. We're going to the highest tip of that highest mountain, I guess. Better get started. lost my dog again. Maybe if I just be patient, it'll come back. I guess it's gone. That worked. 
last time. Whistling, so. But I guess it didn't work this time. Oh well. I gotta get to the top of the mountain, regardless of whether I have my buddy here with me or not. It is kind of lonely, though. Where, oh, where did my doggo go? Okay. 
AI area. Hey, thanks. You can keep the dog. What? 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 Whoa, my lights went up to 517 and I didn't even need supplies? Last stop. Go to the train station. Okay. You couldn't have just radioed me about that if you didn't want the freaking dog. Jerk. Alright, I guess we, me and my new dog are going to the train station, so... Yeah. Uh, we'll meet you there. Oh, look what I just found. Train tracks. I guess I'll just run alongside them until we get to our destination. Or unless I hear a train. And my dog! Yay! Aw, you're a little bit slow, aren't you? doesn't make much sense because you're a machine. So you really should be able to go at turbo speed and be faster than a mere human. But, you know, I'm not here to judge. <laughs> Huzzah! I found it! Okay. Didn't find any supplies on that trip. But, can I take this? Whoa! Ho ho! Hell yeah! pause, dilapidations, processes, or organized decays. Emily Dickinson. The Indifferent Wonder of an Edible Place. A game by Studio Oleomingus. Cool. The Indifferent... Dear Brother, it is a some... Good Lord. Somnambulant dawn. I've never heard that word in my life. A cold awakening of day into night. Of color into grief and of memory into sorrow. And I write to you, my brother, to beg for forgiveness, for I have become a building eater today. Okay. Wow! This is quite a psychedelic world, isn't it? Apparently, uh, I don't know what to do in this game, but I have to eat things? Hold right to- wait. Yes, I eat buildings. I wait beside the monitor for them to tell me what block to eat. What section, neatly carved, awaits my maw, and I consume the building, piece by piece, until ever so slowly the immutable form starts to lose its shape and decay, as if it were never there, leaving only the omnipresent hunger. Uh, hold right to view scope. 134. The pointer shows position of the block. Okay, so it's... You are very close. Okay, I guess I gotta climb this building then? I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> How do I get up there? <laughs> Can I get inside? T 
so it must be this one. Eat it. Eat. Eat. How do I eat? Eh. Uh. Right mouse, do not eat. Left mouse, interact or eat. Okay. Can I? <laughs> what the heck is this game? I'm real confused right now. Oh, wait. Oh, what? Oh. Alright! <laughs> I guess that was the wrong answer. Warning, blocks, or blocks consumed in unstipulated order will result in severe poisoning! Whoa! Well, then. What the fuck? Okay... Okay, now the poisoning is gone. Yes, okay. I think this is right. This is really weird. The town is no more. They ate the walls of the courthouse. They ate the fort atop the hill. They ate our mosque and our roadside shrines. They ate the hospital and the old bazaar, uh, the copper domes at the lantern factory, they ate the monastery and the jail, they ate all the secret chambers and all the nooks, they ate every corner and we fled. I stood by as they ate the walls of my dispensary, soaking bricks in my medicine jars, pouring limestone curry into eager gullets uh, as the roof started to cl crumble. I took my unguents and pills and my de decoctions the chemicals of my livelihood, the grain of my trade. Before they could eat it all, I threw them into the river. Uh, but I kept the old brass locks tied to the blue wooden door that now stands secure and solitary, devoid of the room it once enclosed. All right, give me my next task. 218, okay. Yes. Can I skip this? Nope, okay. Oh my god. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna read all this. Basically, he's like, what about all of this stuff? And it's like, surely there remains some of the town. Probably not. Some has survived, basement without a home, some pieces of the town travel. But the town itself lies bereft of the town, a mirage of time. Um, okay. 82. Alright, well, I guess... There we go. That was close! I almost got poisoned again! I think I decided to not just click randomly. This is weird that the inside of these blocks look like blood, isn't it? <sighs> Door frames. Soldier of the Locust Army. Do not judge me, it's honest work. The only food is gnawing hunger, yearning for a place that is no longer mine. They say there is pride in being an eater of buildings. It's a project. Da -da. I know this. I'm hungry. They fill my shrinking belly, if only for a little while. Y'all can pause and read... Whoa. Oh, <laughs> it's just the side of the TV. Y'all can pause and read that if you really want to, but I, I, I don't know. 887. Okay. There we go. What is the point of this? Like... This is one of the weirdest games I think I've ever played. Stationed at the far edge of town, I'm eating a tower on the other side of the hill. There's no noise, just the sound of my crushing jaws, my jaws crushing. Well, that is a sound. There is no noise, just the sound of my jaws crushing. <laughs> that that counts as a noise, but anyways. uh, Devastation occurs in its own peculiar silence. This is really weird. 113. Eat that one. I 
wonder what it is that I am eating. What building is this? A tower? A turret? A hall? I cannot tell. I do not remember this part of town. It looks different now that it is empty. I like to think of it as a place from one of Abu's stories. A fantastic place to visit, to feed my belly as it once fed my dreams. Perhaps this is a hunting lodge. It's given a poison cup of tea and died writhing on the floor. Whoa! 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 What the? What the? What the? What the heck? Oh. Or perhaps it is the silo from the story of the mad clockmaker that Abu narrated every winter when our beds were pushed together in a single room to share the heat. And when sleep eluded our gathered clan, Abu would jump and mind the story of alarm clocks that, like over grape ri overripe grapes, burst in clangor. Whoa! Now this is getting interesting. What the hell, man? Are you gonna do something? Whoop! <laughs> that scared me. Uh, maybe it's the old bastion, the macabre vestibule, where the sandal merchants gathered to plot the end of the rule. Um, a ghastly tale, when our meals were frugal, our bellies had to be distracted with stories. Whoa, shoes! Whoa, scissors and elephants! Oh. Well, that's weird. I feel like this... Whoa. Oh man, I missed the... Oh, that would have been cool. I dream of these fantastical places of rooms from stories long remembered as I eat this tower. Because I know not, brother, what I eat. Each block I consume is a prelude to the next. Each piece of stone, wood, or marble, plane of glass, is but a morsel in time that I have become the void that is the future. I am only glad I am not eating somebody's home. A ca camera, a bed, a cupboard, a wall imprinted by warm hands, a flower indented by age. I'm glad that my building is faceless. It is just a tower, a turret of little import. I'm glad I do not eat the mi mirab of a mosque or the lintel of a door lovingly decorated with leaves. I do not wish to eat those. I do not wish to eat a home or a shrine, my dearest brother. And I pray to Allah that they never ask me to eat a graveyard. Oh my goodness. Oh. Is that it? Is that the game? Am I done? Great, man. 566. Okay. I guess I'll go find it. Well, I'm not done yet. So, uh... Five sixty-six. Alright, I guess I'll keep going. Because with each grain of sand I swallow, I wonder, who ate your gravestone? Who ate the small pillar of veined rock on which I carved your name? How could they have eaten it? Was it a kafir or a devout? Was it someone so hungry that they never even saw that it was a gravestone? Your gravestone? Or did they perhaps relish it? Delight in eating your grave, your final bed? Perhaps that is why I eat buildings, my dear brother. Perhaps one day I will be asked to eat a gravestone, and then I will know if I am hungry enough to eat it, and then my condemnation will be complete, and I shall lose all hope of ever reaching you. And then perhaps, secure in the knowledge of the gulf that separates us, I shall find peace again. Wow. Well, that was the whole game, I guess. Um, yeah, that was a trippy experience, that's for sure. Um, I definitely think it was a very interesting concept, and I would have liked to see it expanded. Maybe, like, meet somebody else who had to eat things, and why they were eating things? Uh, yeah, no, this was great. I definitely a unique concept that I have never seen before. So, uh, whenever I find that, it's always a good thing. Um, but yeah, that was, that was good. If you wanted to check out any of those games that I played, feel free. They're all free on Steam. Uh, and I'm sure you'll all get a lot of enjoyment out of them. So that concludes my episode of Mini Medley. So thank you all very much for watching this episode. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. 
Have a wonderful rest of your day. Mwah.